Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, everyone. My name is Z, and I'm from Wonder Spark Puppets. And today we are going to be making a really awesome puppet craft. But first, let me make that go away and make that go away. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Z. I'm from Wonder Spark Puppets. And today we are going to be making a really awesome puppet craft. You see, it is Mythical Creatures Week here at Wonder Spark Puppets. We make a different puppet craft, a puppet DIY every single day of the week, Monday through Fridays at 4 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays at 11 a, no, at 10 a.m. Uh, so make sure that you tune in here to see what our new puppet craft is each and every day. Today we are gonna be making a chomping sea serpent. That's right. So awesome. Check it out. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> so we're going to be making this amazing sea serpent out of materials that you have at home. Uh, just stuff that you will already have. It's very easy and super fun and I'm so excited to get started. But before we get started, we always go over our materials of what we're going to need for today's craft. So let's take a look and see what we're going to need to make our awesome chomping rrr, sea serpent. <laughs> All right. So for today, here's my little list right here. We are going to need, ooh, can you see that it was a little bright? There we go. How about, how about right here? That looks good, huh? Okay. We're going to need some cardboard. Okay, some scrap cardboard that you have laying around. Maybe something that your parents are gonna recycle or that your uh, adult in the house is gonna recycle. That is a great choice. You're also gonna need some scissors. You're gonna need some pipe cleaners or brass fasteners if you have them. I actually don't have any brass fasteners right now, so I'm using pipe cleaners because that's what I have around in the house. Markers or crayons or something to decorate your sea serpent with strong tape, a pen or a pencil, and a ruler. And actually, after having done this a couple of times, I'm gonna say that I think a pen is the way to go with this because we're gonna be using it to poke through the cardboard. So you want a pen that is pretty sturdy and sometimes a pencil can break. So, all right, I'm gonna give you a chance to gather all your materials and then we're gonna get started Mythical Creatures Week, Sea Serpent, ah, it's so exciting. Okay, so the first thing that we need is our cardboard. So check it out, come on down here and look at my workspace. I'm gonna clean it off a little bit. So I have this big hunk of cardboard. We have a cat, so we get these Chewy boxes in. Chewy, you're welcome to sponsor this video if you want to. Just kidding, no, actually I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> And we have a ruler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure out about seven inches. And so I'm going to take my pen and I want to cut strips of my cardboard at about seven inches. So you want to make sure that you cut the cardboard where it doesn't have uh, big amounts of tape or a big fold line, like right here is a big fold line, so I'm not gonna cut there, but I am gonna measure, actually if I'm gonna measure seven, I'm gonna have the numbers facing me for a second. There, seven is right about there, right about there. Okay, and then I'm doing it the width of the ruler, which my ruler, just in case anybody's wondering, is an inch and a half wide. So I'm doing the width of the ruler, seven inches, marking it right here at the edge. And I have a nice long rectangle that I've drawn out right there. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is cut this out with scissors. Now, cutting cardboard can be a little tricky. So what I would recommend is measuring out six of your pieces, because you need to do this six times. You need six of these lengths of seven inches by one and a half inches, and then cut them out all at once. And if you need an adult's help to cut the cardboard, totally understandable. 
cardboard can be very unruly. I'm just going to cut out this one piece of cardboard just to kind of show you how I cut cardboard. So again, I'm always going to cut the excess easy material off first. So that would be this little edge right here. There we go. And now I have to do this big long cut right here. So I kind of go in, make sure your scissors are nice and open wide. See that? Big open, open scissors and then cutting down. And I don't even cut, close them all the way. I kind of close them a little bit and then I open them again and just kind of work my way through it. And then I have one nice long seven inch long strip by about an inch and a half. So you want to do this six times. And through the magic of television, I already have my strips. Now you'll notice that some of these strips have holes in them and we're going to talk about that. So what you want is four strips with two holes and two strips with three holes. So you want four strips with a hole in the middle and a hole on one end and two strips with a hole in the middle and a hole on both ends. And when I'm making my hole, what I'm going to what I did is I took one strip of cardboard or maybe an extra that didn't come out so well, maybe I cut out seven and I fold it in half to kind of figure out about where my middle is. And then I take my pen or marker and I'm going to make a dot right there. And then, you know, I don't know what happened to my pen. It must have fallen down. But don't worry, I got another one right here. Um, and then I'm going to take my pen and you're just going to poke right through it and kind of twist it a little bit until it comes out the other side and you have a hole all the way through. Okay? And then what you can do is you can line up that one onto all of the others, all six, and draw your hole through it and then poke it through so that they're all at about the same spot in all six of your strips. And for the end, you can do that as well. So for one for when we're doing the end, you can go in just a bit from the edge and about the middle of the cardboard and poke your hole right through and then twist, twist, twist. Make sure that your pen goes all the way through. You have a nice little hole right there. And then you can use that to measure the end for both sides. And so just to go over again, we want four strips of cardboard that have holes in the middle and holes on one end and we want two strips of cardboard that have holes in the middle and holes on both ends. Okay? So now we're going to go we're going to set these aside for a moment. We're going to go back to our cardboard piece. So this is the piece that I had cut out, right? This is my original 7 inch by one and a half inch piece and what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure seven inches again but this time instead of going across at the one and a half inch mark I'm gonna kinda bring it up a little bit and make it a little bit more rounded because this is gonna be my head well half my head okay and you can make this shape whatever you want, but you want it to be at least the same width as the others. And I'm going to do some big cuts here so I can go in and do my fancy cuts. All right, so there's some big cuts there. And then, if you ever notice when you're cutting cardboard, it's easier to cut one way with the lines on the cardboard, and it is harder to cut the other way perpendicular against those lines. So I have my piece with my big cuts on it and what I'm going to do is now go in and do my fancy cuts, just a little curvy on here, 
okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna go back to my cardboard again. I'm gonna take my pen and now I'm gonna, oops, I'll get those in a second. Small workspace. I'm gonna trace this so I have the exact same thing twice. There we go. And again, we're gonna do our big cuts. Just cutting cardboard can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna do my big cuts first. And then I'm gonna do my little cuts. Now when I first made this, I tried using cereal box cardboard, but I'll tell you, it wasn't thick enough to really hold up. It can do the job, but I think you really want something thicker than a cereal box for this. So I'm gonna round out this edge right here. And we have our top and our bottom of our mouth, but now we need some teeth. I'm gonna clear out my workspace. And I'm gonna draw some teeth and I'm gonna use my ruler. So for the teeth, I'm just gonna do some basic triangle shapes. I'm gonna draw a straight line right there. And a straight line going down, but not all the way down. And another one here. And another one here. And we're gonna do about three teeth total and then bring it in here, down, okay? I'm gonna cut those out. And for this, you don't have to cut it all out one piece. It's a lot easier to do one straight cut and then go back and do the other straight cut and then take it off. So do one straight cut and then turn the material and do your other straight cut. Did anybody get to watch the, um, the puppet show today? Today's Friday, so that means that there was a live puppet show at 11 a.m. on our Facebook page, on Wonderspark Puppets Facebook page. If you saw it, let us know what you think. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, it's gonna be on our Facebook page for one week until next Friday when we do our next live puppet show. So we have the top of one of our mouths, but we need to do the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my mouth upside down like that, and then I'm going to kind of line it up. You can see the back of the box there, and I'm gonna trace my teeth triangles like that and then cut these out. And again, straight cuts. No need to get fancy here. You just need the material to leave. It can be in multiple pieces. It's a lot easier to do straight cuts in cardboard. If you have ideas for uh, puppets that you want to see us make in these DIY puppetry workshops, let us know. You can let us know in the comments or you can message us through our Facebook page or through our website. Uh, we love to hear from you and to get ideas. It helps us out because then we know what kind of puppets you want to you learn how to make at home. So here is what it's looking like so far. And now we get to really get started putting together our sea serpent today. Oh, but you know what? I'll tell you, it is easier to decorate your sea serpent before you put them together. So what I like to do is lay out all of my pieces of my sea serpent. And let's just double check that we have all our pieces. We should have two pieces that have three holes, middle holes and holes on both sides, and we do. 
and we should have four pieces that have middle holes and holes on one side, and we do. So that is six pieces total and our mouth pieces. So now I'm just gonna go through real quick. I have these dot paints, um, and I'm just gonna real quick give my dragon some polka dots. You can color your dragon with markers. There we go. Sometimes the dot paints need to wake up a little bit if they haven't been used in a couple days. Do you guys have dot paints at home? Or what kind of materials are you gonna use to decorate your sea serpent? I'm making a polka dot sea serpent. And I think I'll use purple. It's gonna be a green and purple polka dotted sea serpent, you know, like you do. There we go, wake up that dot paint a little bit. Tomorrow, Saturday, we will have another puppetry DIY with Jenny at 10 a.m. And these videos live on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel and tell people about uh, this work because we would love for more people to know about the work that we're doing. And, uh, to get the word out. Also, if uh, you know anybody who is celebrating a birthday soon and uh, they would like to have a special uh, party, uh, we we do that too. So we, uh, we can make your day feel really special even if you're celebrating at home. So let us know if that's something that you're interested in. Contact us through our Facebook page or through our website. All right, so now we get to do some attaching. So I have some pipe cleaners. Again, if you have brass fasteners at home, you can totally use the brass fasteners. I don't have brass fasteners and because of uh, the social distancing, I can't go out and get any right now. So I'm going to use these pipe cleaners that I do have. I'm gonna cut a small length. It's like about the length of my middle finger. It's not that long. And I'm gonna take the two pieces that have holes in the middle and on both ends. I'm gonna put one over the other and I'm gonna put my pipe cleaner through those two pieces, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda twirl it up so there's a nice little bunch of it on one side, flip it over and twirl it up. Okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another X. We're going to take two of the pieces that have holes in the middle and on two ends. Well, holes in the middle and holes on one end, right? No holes on the other end. We're gonna overlap those. Make sure that when you overlap them that your holes are pointing in the same direction, okay? the holes on the ends. So overlap your two pieces, make an X, put your pipe cleaner through, bunch it up. Okay, make sure that it can turn. And then we're gonna bunch up this one too. All right, and now we're gonna do that one more time Again, make your X, make sure that with the two holes on the ends that they're on the same end. You don't want one hole on this end and one hole on that end. You want both holes on the same side. And I'm just gonna take another piece of pipe cleaner, put it through one, put it through the other. I have my X right here and I'm just gonna bunch that up And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now we have three X's, right? We have two X's with holes on one side and we have one X with holes on both sides. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our X with holes on both sides and one of our X's with holes on 
uh, uh, one side and we're going to attach these together. Okay, so I'm going to put these other things to the side for a moment. I'm going to take another piece of pipe cleaner. This one is a little too short for me. I think I need a little bit more material, so that's why I put that one aside. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to layer this so that one of my cardboard pieces is on top and one is on the bottom, okay? And as you bring it towards each other, that's what they're naturally going to want to do. Don't force it to do something it doesn't want to do. It's naturally going to want to go above and below the other one, okay? So put your pipe cleaner through one and then through the other. Bunch it up. Just like that. All right. Take another piece of pipe cleaner. Put it through one, then the other. Bunch it up. Make sure you like this video if you're watching right now. It helps others to see it and know uh, what's happening. If you want to give it a test and make sure it's working, at this point you can start to move one end and you'll be able to see the action that's happening. Rawr. So that's exciting. It's always fun when you can start to see the progress. So now we're going to do the same thing with this X. We have the side with our two holes. We have the side with these two holes and we're going to attach those. Okay. So put our pipe cleaner through here and then here. If you guys want to check out some other great puppetry offerings, you can go to HensonFoundation.org and they have some really wonderful listings of uh, puppetry that's happening all over the country from some of the Jim Henson Foundation grantees and we are so uh, fortunate to be listed on there with uh, some other really amazing dynamic puppeteers and um, puppetry supporters and theaters. Okay, so now we have our three X's and you should be able to open and close it just like this. So now we want to attach our head. When we attach the head, what I want you to do is to straighten it out so that we can see what it'll look like when the mouth is closed. Okay? And then I think this is going to be my top. So what I'm going to do is take my marker. Where did I put that marker? Unknown. I keep losing my supplies today, but there's another marker right here. I'll find everything after the video is over, I'm sure. And I'm just going to make one giant big eye. Just like that. Okay? Maybe I'll make it uh, with eyelashes. Eyelashes. <laughs> you can make your sea serpent look however you want. So I'm going to take some strong tape. I have masking tape here. I'm going to make a loop out of that. I'm going to put it on the end and I'm going to attach the top of my mouth right here just like that. And I'm going to line this bottom part up to the other one. Take another tape loop. Now if you want this to be more permanent, obviously you could um, you know, use hot glue with an adult's help or um, some white glue and let it dry. But for these purposes, we're just going to use tape loops right now. And then you have your, are you ready for it? moment of truth. Okay. You have your sea serpent Arr! ready to attack any unsuspecting ship that's sailing through the waters. 
Well, I'm so excited to get to do this sea serpent with all of you today in honor of Mythical Creatures Week here at Wonderspark Puppets. Again, if you like the online content that we're creating, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share so that other people can learn about the awesome uh, content that we're creating every single day. We're doing uh, workshops every day, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays at 10 a.m., and a live puppetry show every Friday at 11 a.m. Tomorrow we're going to be doing something at 10 a.m., so be sure to tune in. Jenny will be uh, creating some kind of mythical creature with you. It might be a unicorn. It might be a dragon. Who knows? Um, and then also, if you really like this online content and you want to support us even more, head on over to wondersparkpuppets.com, and there's lots of ways that you can support us. Oh, hold on. That's not it. I will show that to you in a second. Um but anyway, head on over to uh, Wonder Spark Puppets. Here we go. Uh, nope, that's not it. Ah, I can't do it. Ah, there we go. Okay, <laughs> live theater, ladies and gentlemen. Head on over to WonderSparkPuppets.com, and uh, you can see over here there's lots of different ways that you can support the work that we're doing. You can uh, support us uh, by uh, becoming a monthly subscriber and having access to our video library. You can also uh, be um, a super supporter uh, and get shout outs every Friday from Chad. Uh, and there's uh, bigger and better ways to support us as well. Um, you can also go to our shop and purchase a live puppet chat, a puppet telegram, or any kind of merch that all goes to support this online content. And every single week, every $10 that you spend at wondersparkpuppets.com enters you to win a uh, private puppet show uh, in our raffle that we do on Fridays at our live show. So I want to thank you all again for tuning in. Uh, my name is Z. I'm from Wonder Spark Puppets, and I'm so happy that you could join me today to make this awesome sea serpent puppet. And if you make it, make sure that you send us pictures because we want to see all of your awesome creations. So uh, post your pictures in the comments or send it to us in a message. And on Mondays, you will be included in our Master Crafter Monday post where we showcase all of the amazing puppets that people have been making all week. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Friday, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.